Garbage men hear sound in garbage bag, scream in terror when they see what's inside. Casper couldn't believe the strange sound he heard coming from the garbage bag he just dumped in the truck. But before he could check, the truck driver had already pulled away to the next stop. Casper feared that the bag and whatever was inside making the noise would be crushed. He ran towards the truck driver to stop him from running over the bag. Luckily, he arrived on time and was able to check the bag. He wanted to know what was inside, but when he took a look, he turned pale. Casper had to call the police immediately. Casper was not new to this job. He had been a garbage collector for nearly 10 years at this point, working in many different cities. Back then, he had seen people throw away just about anything you could imagine. From new six-person tents to a box full of kittens he had taken to the local animal shelter. Very little could make him change, but his current teammates could make the job difficult at times. The day had started out like any other boring one. Casper took the route for the pickup truck when he got to work. Soon after, he and his team were out the door after a few hours of service. They had almost completed their shift and the atmosphere was much more relaxed. The team decided to play a game to kill time and alleviate the boredom of routine hard work. The game was simple and with few rules. Each garbage man would create his own team. Each of them would try to throw garbage bags into the truck. The further was thrown from the truck, the more points gained. The loser, or the person with the shortest distance, would have to buy everyone beers after their turn. It was well into the summer months and hot that day. The game seemed like a great idea to ease the day's mounting tension, but for Casper, it was just another way for the rest of the team to stand out. Everyone else grabbed a garbage bag for themselves before informing him about the game, leaving him with the remains. Casper rolled his eyes at the situation. He had recently joined this team when he had moved to the city a few months ago. This wasn't the first time his crewmates went out of their way to try and show him that they didn't really consider him a member of the team. Casper shrugged. The truth was, he really didn't want to be part of a team that spent as much time calling random women as working. But with little else to do that day, Casper decided to do what he always did in these situations. He would rummage through the trash for a suitable bag to help with the toss, as he didn't want to buy beers today, but almost all of them were either too heavy or too light. What could he do? His frustration slowly built, and he finally found one that would have to do. Once Casper had finally chosen his bag, it was time for the main event. Casper's colleagues had already taken their places and were ready to target the truck one after another. They finished and threw their bags in the air. The crew cheered and cheered as they watched the bags land on the truck one by one. Soon it was Casper's turn. Casper sighed, weighing the bag in his hand. He would need to work really hard to avoid coming in last again. Stretching his arms out, gripping the garbage bag's head tightly, he chose a distance that was doable but wouldn't bring him last. Bending his knees a little, he waved the bag in the air and closed his eyes for a moment, hoping to get the shot right. The garbage bag flew through the air with ease, going higher than the other bags before it. For a second, it seemed to Casper that he would not only avoid coming in last, but possibly win the bet. However, he overtook it and the bag fell a few meters in front of the garbage truck. Casper was disappointed, but the feeling didn't last long. The men jeered and clapped their hands derisively as the garbage bag dropped to the floor with a wet slap. Casper groaned in frustration, trying to hide the full depth of his irritation with yet another round of beers he would have to buy. However, that's when it started to get really weird. The men were about to go back to work when Casper heard a strange noise coming from the bag. The sound was faint and barely audible over the sound of his co-workers laughing and celebrating. Casper ignored the looks of confusion and annoyance that crossed his faces as he headed for the bag. His focus was squarely on finding the source of the noise. All of his co-workers ignored his concern and continued to throw their bags into the truck with the intention of ending the day. Casper ignored them, moving around the front of the truck to approach the bag he'd thrown in, looking for the source of the noise. His fingers pulled at the garbage bag's tight knots, but it was securely tied. He considered ripping the bag open, but didn't want to risk a mess all over the road so late in the day. But Casper wasn't the only one waiting. Colleagues of his were all exhausted and ready to go home, or better yet, earn their victory beers. None of them had the patience to watch Casper unroll the bag. The one with the least patience took the garbage bag from his hands. Apparently, the mysterious sound was gone and was no longer heard. The man threw the bag into the truck and walked back to the front of the truck. It was clear they had no intention of staying a moment longer to deal with this mystery, and for his part, Casper had no desire to dive into the back of the truck to find the source of the noise. However, he couldn't get the strange bag out of his mind. Finally, the men returned to the disposal plant. The garbage from the truck was being transported to the disposal belt. 
Casper's work was now done, and he and his colleagues were free to go. And still, he couldn't fight the feeling that something was wrong. What if there was a kitten trapped in the bag? It wouldn't be the first time he'd seen the worst of people's cruelty. After a few moments debating his next steps, Casper made up his mind. Taking the wallet out of his pocket, he handed his co-workers a few bucks to cover the round of beers he owed them after losing the game. His conscience wouldn't let him leave until he found out what had happened to the mystery bag. Only then would he join them for a drink. His co-workers shook their heads, but left with the money. The garbage bags, by this time, had been unloaded from the truck onto a conveyor belt. The conveyor belt would transport the bags to General Transport, where they would be separated into recycling and rubbish for burning. The conveyor belt was long and stretched across the entire warehouse. Casper was hopeful that the bumpy ride on the treadmill would trigger the sound again. Casper waited by the belt, patiently assessing each passing bag to see if it was the mystery bag he was looking for. Finally, after several minutes of waiting, he noticed an oddly shaped bag coming towards him. Something about the bag looked familiar. Can this really be it? The bag moved steadily along the conveyor belt, finally rumbling down the line and landing in front of where Casper was standing. Without thinking twice, the garbage man took the bag from the ramp and headed towards the sorting area. Casper could feel his excitement as he held the bag in his hands, but what could be happening? Backed into a corner, Casper took a spot in a secluded area, not wanting to disturb anyone or have anyone snoop around. Placing the bag on a check table, Casper pulled out his switchblade. This time, he didn't need to debate his next steps, cutting a small hole in the back. He revealed the contents of the mysterious bag. He took a deep breath, excited to finally have his questions answered. Casper turned the bag on its side, letting gravity do the rest. The bag's contents spilled out quickly, filling the table instantly. Finally, he knew what had caused the strange noise. There was no animal in the bag as he expected. Instead, there was a small electronic recorder, the kind you take a tiny cassette tape out of a garbage bag. Casper inspected it carefully. The tape recorder was old and chipped, and had clearly been crushed in its bag. The part was dented, probably caused by him throwing the bag. The most surprising finding was that the device was indeed on, but the volume was as low as possible without being muted. Unbearably curious now, Casper turned the tape recorder up to full blast, wondering if he could hear the strange noise better. And indeed, he could. The strange murmur suddenly turned into very clear words that Casper heard in shock. The recording was of someone whispering, and the message was very disturbing. The voice was that of a woman sounding very scared, whispering, Please, I need help. Come to 52 Wellington Street. I don't have much time. Please, save me. Completely stunned by the message, Casper couldn't believe what he had just heard. Something was very wrong here, but what could he do taking what he discovered to his colleagues? Everyone discussed what they should do next. Some of the crews were convinced it was some kind of hoax, but Casper argued that they should at least inform the police. This seemed to convince the rest of the crew, so Casper called the police to report his strange discovery. The police were initially skeptical, but Casper insisted that they at least carry out a welfare check on the address. He couldn't get over the terror in the mystery woman's voice. Eventually, the dispatcher agreed to send a squad car as long as Casper met them near the given address. Casper didn't know why the police wanted him there. He hoped they would take the case and leave it out. He just wanted to know how things ended. When he got close to the address, there was already a police car with a nervous policeman waiting. Casper showed them the tape recorder as evidence explaining how he had found it. The two began walking towards the house, which was a few doors down from where the car was parked. The officer explained that things could easily get out of hand if the police showed up at the front door of a possible crime scene. At this point, the best plan was for Casper to go with the policeman to the address with the tape recorder as evidence. The officer stayed behind, instructing Casper to ring the bell in his garbage man outfit holding the tape recorder. The hope was that whoever came to the door would see Casper holding the tape recorder and would be willing to talk instead of seeing the police and panicking. Casper's heart was pounding in his throat as he approached the house alone. He was really willing to take such a big risk without even knowing who he was doing it for. But neither Casper nor the officer could have foreseen the chaos that occurred next. Casper rang the doorbell, his heart racing, holding the tape recorder in sight. He hoped the officer was ready to act quickly if necessary. There was a brief movement behind the door, then a muffled voice through the door asking what he wanted. Casper said that he had found a tape recorder with a message that mentioned this address. Immediately, too fast for Casper to prepare, the door opened. A man opened the door, holding a knife. With a savage look in his eyes, he attacked Casper, who immediately jumped back with a cry of shock. 
But before the man could do any damage, the policemen were running from behind the greenery with their guns in hand. They instructed the shocked man to drop his weapon, which he did immediately. The man screamed and struggled as the policemen quickly pulled on the handcuffs to restrain him and take him to the vehicle. Casper stood to the side, trembling, listening as the man ranted and raved and demanded to know why they had come to his door. However, the way he couldn't stop looking at the recorder, it was obvious that he knew. The officer called for backup and soon two more cars were at the address. Two of the officers carried the man to the car while the others entered the house very cautious. Casper stood outside with one of the other officers watching a monitor that showed body camera footage. The officers went through the entire house, carefully cleaning each room without finding any sign of life. In fact, there was no sign of another person. Finally, there was only one place to check the basement. Casper watched with bated breath as the policemen approached the door. Immediately, the three different locks on the door, locked with shiny new padlocks, taught them that this was exactly where they were supposed to be. Slamming the door, the policemen backed away as a desperate cry for help rose from the basement. Even Casper could hear it through the monitor. The voice was that of the woman on the recording. One of the officers ran to get a set of pliers from the patrol car. Then they opened the door and entered to the basement. There, to their horror, they found a woman tied to a support beam. The police quickly cut the woman down and carried her out of the house. She was shaking, exhausted and crying, but she could explain what had happened to her. The story left everyone, especially Casper, completely stunned into silence, shocked at what she had suffered. Apparently, the man who had tried to attack Casper and who was now arrested was the woman's husband. He had always been an abusive man, but a few days earlier, he had completely broken her down and locked her in the basement for some imaginary mistake. Although frightened, she was left unattended most of the time, which allowed her to try to plan an escape. Desperate, she searched the basement for anything that could help her and finally managed to find an old voice recorder. There was a tape inside, and she carefully whispered the message that Casper had heard. She feared that her husband would hear it, but he was too busy walking around the house, yelling and drinking. When her husband came to collect the garbage in the basement, she turned down the volume on the tape recorder and stuffed it into the garbage bag. She prayed that her husband would not see it, but that someone else would. However, as one day to the next, she began to lose hope that anyone would find her, and so she tried to escape through the basement window. However, her husband caught her, and that's when she was tied to a beam. At this point, she was sure that she would not survive. She was thankful that Casper found the recording and went to the police. There was little doubt about someone's death, that he had saved her life. The woman is being nursed back to mental and physical health by her grateful family. Her soon-to-be ex-husband is in jail, awaiting trial on several serious charges, including kidnapping and grievous bodily harm. He will be behind bars for a long time, thanks to Casper refusing to give up the strange noise that all other people refuse to believe.